even though I may say some fairly unflattering things about Addie, um, you know, um, I hasten to say to everyone, if you have a process that works for you, you know, that produces the quality product that you want in the time frame that you've got, with the resources that you've got, I think you're really fortunate. And you ought to stick with that process. So uh, if you're an Addy advocate and you're an advocate because it does for you what you want it to do, um, then by all means, um, you should be happy and, and stay with it. You know? Addy is a process that was developed by the military for people that did not have uh, instructional background at a time of special need at war when we needed to produce a lot of training material as quickly as possible. Uh, cookbook approach was a really good solution and its specificity and stepwise organization uh, really was successful and it was great. Uh, but today we have uh, different levels of aspirations. It's we want our learning experiences to be meaningful, memorable, motivational, uh, fun, uh, and use the technologies that we have available. So the challenge and opportunity are really quite different, and, and we found great success with SAM. So we just want to share it with you for your consideration. For me, I look for instructional activities that are defined by CCAF. They're defined by context, challenge, activity, and feedback. This context challenge keeps people really focused on the outcomes that we are striving for. In, in actuality, we don't care what each other knows. We only care what you do with that knowledge. And if you just know it and you can answer a multiple choice uh, question, um, you, you aren't very valuable in most situations, you know? It's what can you perform, what can you do? So my scale is you begin with knowledge which you want to transform into ability, which you want to transform into performance. If you know that there's going to be a quiz at the end, and this doesn't matter if it's corporate training or, or uh, second grade, if, if you know that there's going to be a quiz at the end, we allocate our brain power to learn material so that we'll have it at the desired time. And then it erodes amazingly fast. And this tell and test form of instruction really fosters forgetting, if you will. So I have to tell you that I'm not interested in a process that's designed to optimize building tell and test stuff. Addy was, again, developed in a, in a very nicely organized uh, manner. But as I look at CCAF and I look at the way Addy is arranged, I'm not seeing it focusing on that kind of experience, on the learner's experience. I'm seeing it focused on content. And I think content comes in as a solution, but not the focus. As I look at those various tasks, all of them make sense to me. And they belong in a process of developing instructional materials, but they don't belong in phases, uh, as is often laid out. Now, of course, there have been many modifications to Addy over time to try to deal with that, and we're just building on those ideas. I think that's going very much in the right direction. I think I could think of a process, and it, it probably would look kind of a lot like a simple form simplified form of Addy. You could do something a lot simpler than all of the steps that are usually listed in Addy and get a talent test. And in fact, that's what lots of teachers uh, in schools and everywhere else do many, many, many times. Now, as you know, I do most of, most of my work with at least an e-learning component uh, in it. So I tend to think uh, about this in those terms. But Everything that we're talking about here in terms of process and in terms of product is not in any way restricted to e-learning. But it sure applies to e-learning because of all of the expense that we have to go through in, in building our applications. And so yeah, we, we really ought to get them right, especially because e-learning replicates the experience to uh, uh, as many learners out there as, as we can deliver it to. So there's a greater obligation for us, I think, when we're using an amplifying distributive technology to get things 
as good as they can be to get them right. When I ask people what problems they have to be addressed by their process, I usually hear of two. One of them is the good ideas, maybe the best ideas, often come late in the process where it's very difficult to act on them. And the other is that they get unexpected changes, such as a subject matter expert looking at the material after it's all been developed and saying, no, 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 you've, you've left out something really important. Or the buyer saying, I really want this to be more game-like. I thought this was going to be more fun. <laughs> or some big change like that. Just can be totally disruptive and very difficult to know what to do. Well, very similar to what software engineers have found and have developed the Agile solution to solve, in SAM, we use iterations to address these various issues. After I've spoken about this so many times, I hear the feedback, well, we do what, what you say, uh, and, and we just don't see how that's different <laughs> from Addy. Well, it's very different from Addy, uh, believe me. Now, here is uh, a quick uh, example of uh, an award-winning uh, project to pre prevent uh, bank fraud. And you'll notice here in the first iterations how rough and simple this, the sketches were. Uh, this was to have tellers look at checks uh, and evaluate them systematically, determine whether they're fraudulent or not. After those sketches were made and a lot of discussion to decide if this is a good path, then a second uh, iteration went through and you see it's dressed up a little bit more, talking a little bit more about navigation and this e-learning approach. Uh, but you notice here, even on the introduction, the text was not filled in, not important at this point. And we see now a little better representation of the check, more of a thought about the systematic approach to the analysis and uh, a notion of how uh, learners would be challenged to make sure that they have the skills necessary to process checks. And then the third iteration produced a final product here, uh, which uh, you can see here in its final skins and interactive components. Love to be able to talk you through each one of those, but we can't do that in 10 minutes. Converting a PowerPoint is not instructional design. No. Um, Creating a nice page turner that provides information to a learner, while may seem be, to be in the realm of instruction, really the majority of that effort is media design or instructional materials design. Right. Uh, and nowadays, with the rapid development tools, it's really just you know materials development. There's no design to it at all, with the templates and the things that you can use. Right. Right. And it's not that those are bad always, or no. that's the situation. But I think when we're saying instructional design, we really want to push each other and, and everyone here at Allen Interactions and everyone in our industry right. to really design things for learners for the purpose of learning. Right, right. We have to be honest with ourselves. If it's just converting a PowerPoint presentation, there's enough tools now out there that anybody can convert a, right. a PowerPoint presentation and put that on the web and call it e-learning. We, as stuff. instructional designers, need to take a step back and look at the, the strategy, the approach, the performance, all of those things to become a partner, to not be seen as a cost center, to be seen as a value add to our organizations, to our clients, to whoever it is that we're building this learning for, and say, look, we're going to look for performance change methods, yeah. and we're going to have challenge-based instruction that mm. will get us to change that performance. You know, Michael always says that Addy tells us what we need to do, right. and Sam challenged us to say, why not? Right. And I think that instructional design is more of the art of why not. <laughs>